Guys, we have a lot to talk about here in this video. We did see Fed Jerome Powell have a speech today. There's two more throughout this week, but he said some very bad things for the potential rate hike increases. Talking about 50 basis point rate hikes, talking about a lot of crazy things. The markets were not really expecting, and this is kind of being quoted as Jerome Powell's Paul Volcker moment. And if you guys don't know who Paul Volcker is, it is right here. The term Volcker moment refers to the anti-inflation initiative led by former Federal Reserve Chair uh, Chairman Paul Volcker. When inflation was rampant in the late 1970s, Paul Volcker made the difficult decision to raise interest rates dramatically in an attempt to rein in inflation. In this speech, uh, the lady said that was actually asking questions, she said, this kind of sounds like the the buck starts here kind of speech and that's the actual name of the speech that was coined after obviously the speech came out uh with paul volcker when he said hey we're gonna have to do whatever it takes to rein in inflation she kind of said this is your volcker moment and he laughed at that he kind of laughed at that so it's getting a little crazy I need to bring you guys this information as well as the other data and information around AMC that you need to know. So stay tuned. We're going to get into this video. The only thing that I ask in the meantime is you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts and comments, concerns down below in the comment section. If I don't answer your question down there, then come join us on the live stream in between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will answer each and every question that you do have as well as that. Get your free stocks links down below in the description as well as come join the trading community if you guys want to be up on all of these trades when we make them now getting into this video amc is now down about two percent earlier in the day amc was outperforming up about two and a half to three percent it all comes down to what powell actually said today and with powell being super hawkish like he was today it really hurts a lot of your high growth stocks a lot of stocks that have more debt than others as well as that kind of need those rates to stay lower for longer and let's go over some of the headlines that did come out from Jerome Powell. And one good headline that came out came out is that uh, Powell said, I don't see elevated chance of recession in next year. And that's what saved the markets earlier in the week. Well, late last week, that's what really saved the markets. And that's that's what caused the uh, the rally. But Powell said, if we think it's appropriate to hike 50 basis points, we will. We may well conclude that we need to move more quickly and then powell was asked what would prevent a 50 basis point move in may and guess what he said he said nothing he said if if the data supports a 50 basis point hike that's what we will do and guess what the data is supporting a 50 basis hike that's what the markets are pricing in as well we will talk about that in just one second you guys can monitor that using the fed rate monitor tool but that's what the markets are pricing in powell was also asked if the economy goes into a recession later into the year, will that derail your guys' plans on raising rates at a faster pace? Guess what he said? He said no. He said that that would not stop anything until we get price stability and maximum employment. He said, uh, you know, even if a recession did come, he wouldn't think it would hurt the labor market as much due to the um, need for workers that we are seeing right now. The fact the labor market does not have enough workers he don't think that that would just switch all of a sudden because there were to be a technical recession. Again, a recession is two declining quarters of GDP growth, which can be very small. You know, 0.01% decline two quarters in a row. That's a recession. Now, that kind of spooked the markets a lot. And that's why you did see a very violent move, like I called out in the video yesterday. I said to watch this, to watch Fed Jerome Powell's speech. When you start to see wild moves, um, that's the Fed speaking. And that's what you've seen that first move down in one minute. The, the SPY dropped about 0.32%. And then this whole speech, the markets were dropping. And once the speech ended, he uh, the markets did start to bounce back up like what typically does happen but this was not good at all and these were really the main headlines to point out they covered a lot um but this was the main thing this is really the only thing that mattered too much out of that whole speech and if this is really fed jerome powell's paul volcker moment then get ready because shit is about to get crazy he was also um asked and he also did clarify that they want to reduce the balance sheet in about three years well they want to start 
here shortly, probably at the next meeting, but he said it will likely take about three years and they want to bring it down to almost pre pandemic levels, but a little bit of a buffer zone, they called it. So pre pandemic balance sheet was around $4 trillion. Uh, so in between four and $6 trillion would probably be where they want to keep the balance sheet. I would imagine maybe 5 trillion is a comfortable level. And the thing about this is this creates a lot of uncertainty because quantitative easing purchasing of assets like this really only happened in 08. And the only time that we ever really started to let the balance sheet run off and to shrink the balance sheet was during 2018, 2019. Guess what happened in the markets during 2018, 2019? Well, it was not pretty and i have this pulled up on the weekly candlestick chart so it doesn't look as bad if we go ahead and pull this up on the daily candlestick chart you could see just how miserable it was during this time if you were an investor it was like man i just cannot get a break pull this up it went, went back way too far there we're still in the 2000s okay let's let's, let's go a little faster um that was really nope that's 08 that's 08 uh, this is 2018 and 2019 um, right in here so 2018 crash 2019 crash it creates a lot of uncertainty anytime the balance sheet is mentioned because we've never tried to reduce the balance sheet three or four trillion dollars nobody really knows what to expect whereas we've had interest rates go up and down for so long we know what kind of effects that will cause on the stock market as well as on the overall economy so there's a lot of uncertainty here and as you guys do know as you guys do know you should know this by now from watching this channel if you guys are subscribed you know then you know this if you you're not subscribed definitely subscribe to the channel but the markets can handle bad news the markets hate uncertainty or like what i always say uh the only thing the markets hate more than bad news is uncertainty balance sheet that's a big uncertainty red flag so those are really the main things that came out from fed jerome powell's speech unfortunately we have two more Jerome Powell's speeches this week later on throughout the week and then we do have as well a couple other fed speakers a lot of fed speakers just throughout the rest of the week so it's mainly going to be dominated around the fed not too much economic that data that does uh, actually come out we do have a lot of uh real estate data like new home sales some gas uh reserve um data points that do come out as well but nothing too crazy besides that as you probably do know by now, the markets revolve around the Fed. We also had Fed Bostic that spoke earlier today, and he's typically seen as more of a dovish Fed member, and he was very hawkish on uh, the economy as well as on raising rates. Now, let's get into some of the specific data around AMC right after we talk about the Fed rate monitor tool. This is something you guys can uh, pay attention to for yourself. The next uh, FOMC meeting is May 4th at 2 p.m six weeks one day 23 hours and 33 minutes away now you can see that the probability for a half percent rate hike is 61.6 percent that is much higher than we've seen over the past week last week it hit a low of about 27 percent probability so now the markets are really starting to price in uh, a much higher likelihood of getting a half percent rate hike uh you know this next meeting uh, because of what Fed Jerome Powell said today. So watch for a lot more un instability, instability, instability in the markets. The biggest bullish catalyst that is going to come is if this war in Ukraine does end, but that is likely to take some time and it looks like they're pretty far off coming to an equal, gr equal ground as far as the, uh, the talks are concerned. So just be mindful of that. That's the next bullish catalyst. The Fed today did kind of kill the markets and any kind of uh, bear market rally that we were experiencing. Now, as far as the max pain is concerned, you're looking at $15.50 per share by the end of this week. As you guys already do know, the max pain is the price in which the most option holders lose the most amount of money. So your market makers hedge funds, institutions, guys that really control the market and how the markets move, they make the most amount of money if they can pin the stock roughly around this max pain price of $15.50 per share by the end of 
the week. As far as the AMC Ortex data is concerned, you're looking at a short interest number of about 20.99%. Current shares that are sold short of 108.17 million. Cost of borrow max of 2.73%. Utilization of 100%. And days cover at 2.99. So not too much has actually changed right there. But still, it goes to show shorts are not covering. And the positive order value for the day as far as options are concerned from these institutional investors is 98% positive. Oh, excuse me. Three orders totaling $7.21 million. That's, that's big. That's a one, a big number on the top line right here, 7.21 million, but it, but a positive order value of 98% is a uh, really, really good. Now, as far as a quick look at the technicals and uh, what they are telling us, we're above $15 per share. Watch to see if we can remain above 15. It looks like that'll turn into a support level. And then once we do see the next bullish catalyst, the big catalyst, Ukraine-Russia war coming to an end, that's going to be the biggest uncertainty factor as of right now that will eventually go away and that will cause amc as well as the broad markets to skyrocket in my personal opinion especially the stocks like amc that are down 60 70 percent from their highs well from their highs down even more than that like 85 percent those are going to be the stocks that really recover a lot of those stocks are ones that we own in our portfolios, but we will have to watch the 50 day moving average that is sitting at $17.35 per share. Volume for the day is sitting at about 28.5 million shares. That's very low. So we're really waiting for the volume again to come back into the stock, which inevitably it will. I don't know when, but when it does, expect to see a lot of bullish activity uh, in AMC's share price. As far as the RSI is concerned, that neutral level is 50. We're at 44.38. So a little bit on the oversold side but uh we still have a lot of rally in us to go before we would even get close to hitting that overbought level which typically when you hit overbought you do tend to come down pretty sharply so there's still a lot of room for a potential rally here now if the macd is slightly on the bearish side we'll see by the end of close if this does change but uh looking good bullish nonetheless amc down about three percent not so bullish the fed killed the the market potential rally for the day unfortunately the fed does speak a couple more times throughout this week and that's what the headlines are going to be concerned about if the fed hits us with any new details any of those speeches so that is going to be all for this video get your free stocks links down below in the description as well as come join the trading community down below in the pinned comment go ahead and follow me over on twitter as well also link down below in the pinned comment Make sure to come check us out on the live stream later on tonight, 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every day besides Friday and Saturday, we are live answering all of your questions. I sometimes do not have time to get to in the comment section. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.